Welcome to the Enjoy More 30s Family Finance Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to making life more enjoyable for young families by hitting on the financial topics that tend to weigh on us, stress us out, and distract our focus from simply enjoying life. Hello and welcome to the next series here on the Enjoy More 30s Family Finance Podcast. As I said at the end of the last season, investments aren't my favorite thing to talk about, surprisingly enough coming from a financial advisor, but sometimes I think that I may be kind of the only one out there. So investments are what people have the most questions about. Investments are what people you know, make movies about, but the mentalities that go with that, the make it big mindset from what I have seen more often hinders the way people are able to operate and the way they go than than how it helps. So why I'm doing this series is because I want to help you reframe how you view, how you utilize your investment so it can be done in, in hopefully a more constructive way. And hence, this series is called Raising Your Investment Mindset. As always, if you like what you're hearing, please make sure to subscribe or follow us on Apple Podcasts or really wherever you listen to. Clicking that star, leaving the review, it really, really does help us reach literally millions of other young families out there that are just like you. Now, if you want to hear a focus on finances that are related more to your general mindset, maybe to your parents' mindset, or even helping your kids with their own money mindset growing up, please make sure to check out some of our past seasons that dive deep into those areas. We started this year off even with a New Year's focus mindset getting right in the right direction in the new year. So definitely check those out if you have not already. This series, though, like I said, is about raising your investment mindset, how you approach investments as a tool to help you reach your goals. So just like a podcast entitled Raising Your Healthy Mindset would focus on a holistic view versus giving you just, you know, five-minute crash diet tips, this series isn't about stock picking or the next best crypto asset. It's about giving you the opportunity to better understand investments and their place in your overall plan. The opportunity to not perhaps be afraid of investments because they are some unknown that you were really never taught about in school. The opportunity really to potentially avoid some of those pitfalls that we see many people out there making. Today, we are starting off with investments don't do good. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. So I will apologize in advance if you are listening and find me up on the soapbox. So maybe it is just guys, but I so often hear people say, yo, that dude does really good, alluding to maybe the amount of money that individual makes or something. But have you ever just stopped and wondered what the heck that even means? Is there some scale that I'm not aware of out there where you pass above a certain threshold in the sky? and now you're in the doing good camp? The truth is that whoever is likely whispering this into your ear is saying so because they either A, see this person buying a lot of stuff, and so they're just assuming they have plenty of money, or B, they somehow found out how much this person happens to earn, and to them, that sounds like a lot. Either way, that person is doing their own internal judgment-type comparisons to arrive at that conclusion. To take this even a step further, think about if someone you know is driving across the country. You say to their parents, hey, how is Beth doing on her cross-country trip? If her parents say, she's doing good, you basically know, well, well, nothing, right? (laughs) You probably assume she's alive, but is she doing good because she's seeing a lot of cool stuff? Is she making really good time across country? Is she just driving, you know, really economically from a fuel perspective? (laughs) How is she doing good? And when it comes to your investments, I want you to think about and be able to better determine what doing good means to you and how to therefore then better evaluate it. The goal then for today's episode, so the, if you can say this at the end of the episode, then you have succeeded statement is I now understand what I want my investments to do and how I should be evaluating if they're doing that. So again, I now understand what I want my investments to do and how I should be evaluating if they are doing that. As you could probably tell, we often get people saying that their investments are doing good. This, like other scenarios, 
really means almost nothing other than the person is currently arbitrarily satisfied with their performance. Investments, again, as we've talked about on many of these different episodes, are the tools that we're using to help us reach new goals. They are the fuel. But just like launching a spaceship, the fuel isn't the goal. The goal isn't to just have a lot of fuel. The destination, space in this case, is the goal. So we need to adjust our thinking first of doing good from some performance number on a piece of paper that makes us feel good or bad, because that's really just saying that we now have more or less fuel than we have before. But do we have enough fuel? Do we have the right fuel? Doing good, therefore, should mean on track to have the fuel we need to get us to our goal, that destination. So if my investments are doing good, that means they're on track to having the fuel that I need to get me to the goal that I'm trying to reach. If you earn 15% a year, let's say, on your investments, which is a completely unreasonable expectation long-term, by the way, for anybody out there listening, but you are not going to be able to meet your goal, then who really cares, right? I mean, great, I have more fuel for my rocket, but I still can't make it to outer space. I'm going to blow up in the atmosphere. Still really not that useful. This is why I say investments are far less important in the grand scheme of things than planning. The planning is what gives you clarity and the planning is what makes things possible. So, Joe, are you saying I should just ignore my investment performance altogether? No, I am not saying that. But if you're going to dive into the performance, you need to do it properly. Properly means comparing it to its peers. If you told someone about your investments, it should be, number one, they are or are not, (laughs) excuse me, they are or are not keeping me on a path to reach my goals. And two, they are or are not doing well compared to their peers. Again, they just can't do good on their own compared to nothing. Sometimes when someone has an existing investment, they say it is doing good. And what this oftentimes translates into is the area their fund is focused in may have done particularly well. Let's say your account went up 30% in 2021. You would say, hey, this is the best fund ever. I'm never going to sell it. However, let's say that when we looked at your account, All you owned was a real estate fund. Well, the real estate category index actually went up over 45%, 45% in 2021. So your fund in reality did quite poorly. We compared it to its peers, what other funds like it should have done, and your fund in this example missed the mark by 15%. And this is true, by the way, regarding the real estate category index this last year. It is also important to note that the year before that, in 2020, it went down over 11%, just to illustrate how it, like most every category, should be a piece of a portfolio and not representing the entire thing. The point, though, is a huge trap we see so many people fall into. So if you don't have the desire or the ability to properly compare and evaluate your different funds, then you need to, in my strong opinion, either A, Hire an advisor who knows how to do this for you, or B, use an allocation fund that has a manager who can make sure you aren't overly concentrated in any one area. So as we get to the end of this episode here, let's circle back to the goal statement that we said at the beginning. That statement was, I now understand what I want my investments to do and how I should be evaluating if they are doing that. I want my investments to get me to a goal. So are they on a path to do that? And are they doing so effectively when I compare them to their peers? So thanks for tuning in today. Join us next week for the episode called Buy High, Sell Low, where we're going to talk about how overall everyone knows buying low and selling high makes sense, but why so many people wind up doing the exact opposite. Overall, if you're able to implement what we covered today, Fantastic as always, less to worry about, more focus on just going out there and enjoying life. If you're wanting help with these things though, if you have questions you need help in clarifying, you can either head head on over to the Ask Joe section on the show's website, enjoymore30s, that's 30s.com. You could also connect with me directly by visiting my wealth management firm site, New Horizons Wealth Management at nhwmllc.com. 
Until next week, thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. The conversations on this show are Joe's opinions and provided for general information purposes only. They do not constitute accounting, legal, tax, or other professional advice for your specific situation. You should always seek appropriate advice from a financial advisor, accountant, lawyer, or other professional before acting upon any content or information found here first. Joe is affiliated with New Horizons Wealth Management, LLC, a branch office of TFS Securities, Inc., and TFS Advisory Services, an SEC-registered investment advisor, member FINRA SIPC.